Right, in this video, we're going to be looking at how well sections are in resisting compression. So we're going to be comparing compact versus non-compact sections. So compact sections being fully effective, whilst non-compact sections meaning less than 100% effective. And then we're going to find out how we actually determine whether a section is compact versus non-compact. And by looking at the slenderness yield limit, when a plate element is too slender, it becomes less effective. And then we're going to be able to use this slenderness yield limit uh, along with our, our plate slenderness in order to determine the effective area of our section and also determining form factor which is used in uh, finding our design section capacity in compression. So first we begin by comparing compactness. Alright, so this depends on the effective area. And now uh, the effective area is determined by our slenderness, and we're going to look at that in a bit. But starting with some basic comparisons, so our compact sections are fully effective. That means our whole section is uh, effective in resisting our compression forces, including local buckling. All right, so when that is the case, we're going to use a form factor equal to one. Our effective area is equal to our gross area, so the entirety of our gross area is able to resist compression. When that is the case, our section capacity is e equal to AGFY, so something similar to those you've encountered in tensile capacities. And all the UC and WC members in the one steel table is um, compact because they've been specifically designed for compression. And uh, in this case, 